love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. In the one who remembered us in our low estate. Love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Thank God for his enduring love. You may be seated. A former member of our church who now lives in another state told me about her mother, a mother who was absolutely insistent that the children learn to be thankful. The attitude of gratitude was to be key in their lives, and she stressed it over and over again, say, thank you, thank you. And she said those are the two of the most important words, two words, thank you, thank you, don't forget that. Well, uh, this member told me that when she was about five years old, they were visiting some people, and the lady of the household thought she was such a cute little girl, and so she came and said, put out your hand, and she gave her a handful of candy. And, of course, the girl just stood there. I mean, and the mother was observing this, thought, come on, come on. And so she caught the little girl's eye and said, two, two words. So the little girl put her other hand out and said, more, please. <laughs> I think we're kind of uh, that way so often, aren't we? It's kind of a, a me, you know, and uh, we take, and we're, but we really don't say thank you. I was kind of wondering this morning, for what are you thankful? Can we just get people to shout out, uh, I'm thankful for, what, what might you say? Um, for example, I might say, I'm thankful for my mother-in-law. Well, that's kind of a bad example, but you can think of better ones, right? Okay, let's hear what you're, I'm thankful for. Work, yeah. Family. The senior pastor, thank you. Next one over here. Pardon? Your boys. You're thankful for the boys. Are they teenagers yet? And you're still thankful. Okay. <laughs> for her boys. Church family. Bless you. Pardon me? Laptops. Laptops. <laughs> Laughter, yeah, laughter. Interesting. Brain. Brain. Grace. Grace. Ah, we're getting close now. It's kind of interesting that people's response are usually, uh, oh, I'm thankful that I have a, my family and my the work and my... And uh, as we notice today that no one said, I'm thankful for God or I'm thankful for his goodness. Um, it, it, it's kind of interesting that basically we think of ourselves and we're thankful, but it's sort of in the box, the uh, it's all about me box. And so oftentimes we, we, we need to get beyond outside the box and start thanking God for who he is and uh, his, his uh, goodness and his holiness. And it's kind of interesting, Gallup poll uh, was given a few years ago and came up with some very interesting responses. They uh, asked a thousand plus people the question, name or the statement, name two things, two or three things for which you are most thankful. When you hear the response, you'll think, ah, we weren't so bad after all. Notice, most important at 61% was family. Second most important at 50 well, that was 61%. At 50% was health. Third, at 21% was job or career. Fourth, at 20% was children. Fifth, at 12% was just being alive. And it was interesting. Some values vary among age and demographic group. For example, older people emphasized health. And the over 40 crowd, remember after 40, it's patch, patch, patch. And uh, so most of us who are over 40, yeah, health is mighty important. <laughs> Younger people emphasize job and career. And this is interesting. Ethnic minorities were more likely to be thankful for just being alive. One answer, low in all demographic groups. 
5 to 8 percent of any demographic groups included God as one of the three things for which they were most thankful. Because that's kind of outside our box, isn't it? Acts 17, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. So oftentimes we forget just to be thankful for God, for, for who he is. And that's why I've titled our time together in the word before we go to the Lord's table as Thanksgiving outside the box, that we might go from here this morning, not just be thankful for what he does for us, but for who he is. And that begins, everything falls from that. So not just what today are we thankful for, but who, that who being God himself. You'll notice that 26 times this morning, you said, his love endures forever. And the reason the psalmist does that is because God's basic characteristic is love. Even when he disciplines us or permits us to go through difficult times, his basic characteristic is love. Far different from many of the religions of the world. For example, I remember being in the Holy Land and you'd see things like this that were unearthed and some of the excavations. You'd find in, in various cultures throughout the world where the heathen have worshipped, there are altars. And the purpose of worshipping at that altar was to appease God. Because the average heathen, God is, is a God who is mad and who is angry. And so the people throughout history, as you unearth these uh, excavation sites, you find altars that were used to, to try to appease this God who was, who was ugly and he was mean and he was mad. And so they would offer sacrifice, sometimes even their children, to appease a God who hated them. And that's why you have the great separation. Because the, those who worshipped God uh, were people who, who had a God that hated them, but we are separate from that. The great separation for the believer is God is love. And so our worship is not to appease our God, but to, to worship him and praise him for who he is. And the psalmist 26 times reminds us that who he is, he is at the heart of himself, the basic characteristic is love, separating this from all the other heathen kinds of worship and, and uh, praise and, and honor to their gods. Our God is a God of love. And so when he begins to um, thank God in this psalm, he begins by being thankful for who God is. Verse 1, who God is. You'll notice he puts the statement in the uh, present tense. Uh, for example, he's not looking, you know, at, to the future. Back here as a, as a uh, psalmist looking to the future somehow and realizing that someday there's going to be Christmas and someday there's going to be the cross when Christ will come and pay the price of sin. You know, oh, so he's not saying God will be good. But here's the psalmist amidst his own generation before the cross pre-Calvary. That's where he stood. And, uh, and yet he is very um, much a, a God, uh, an, uh, awed by this God of love, even though he hadn't seen the cross or he hadn't even thought of it. Yet with himself and his own generation, he says God is present tense. Now when we give thanks, we are on this side of the cross. So you 